tuning in to the online broadcast network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hey there, Turn AMC fans! Welcome to another edition of the Turn After Buzz Recap Show. How are you doing tonight? Thanks, I'm good. It's good to be back. Yes, joining me in the studio is Kristen Carroll. Hi, guys. You may remember me some, from such podcasts as Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Walking Dead. <laughs> we are so happy to have you back on uh, After Buzz TV. General, it's good to have you back. Could you, good to be back, Lieutenant. <laughs> yes, I'm your host, Megan Salinas. Um, and if you guys want to keep an eye on the hashtag ABTV turn. We will be keeping an eye on that for Twitter, or you can tweet at us directly. You can tweet at me at the Menguin. That's T H E M E N G U I N. Kristen? And you can tweet at me at Kristen Carroll13. Um, I'm not so good on the on Twitter the Twitters and the, the stuff. <laughs> I can do it at home. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. And if you guys haven't already done so, please go to AfterBuzz TV uh, on YouTube and iTunes. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Rate, leave a comment. We love hearing from you guys. So it means the world. And uh, you might even get a shout out on the show if you do. So mm -hmm. we love hearing from you. Let's talk about this week's episode, season two, episode four, Men of Blood. I'm just so, I, I know you've been doing this the last couple of weeks, and I apologize for not being able to, people who know me um, from, you know, other shows and stuff know that I took a job that I couldn't be here. So now I've switched jobs once again, and now I can be here. So I'm able to join you now. <laughs> I was Thank like, you. I'll be on turn in two weeks. Thank you for Talk not leaving me alone. <laughs> it's very lonely in the I studio when you show, talk though. to yourself. Yeah. So good. And, and obviously to see you. <laughs> yeah, no, but this show, I'm so happy to actually talk to somebody about this show, too, because not very many people I know actually watch it. Mm -hmm. And so it's really frustrating because it's so good and, like, no one gets it. <laughs> it's kind of a bummer. Well, in this season, too, it's really just taken off. I mean, I liked it last season as well, and, I mean, the, I mean, the acting's just spectacular. And I think, you know, before I even met the actors... They're just all <laughs> so great, and they've just been amazing, and they love being on the show, which makes me even want to, like, watch it more, and it's it's such a positive, you know, experience every time, like, I watch the show. So. Yeah, no, every, every episode, especially this season, has been, like, edge of your seat, because we were talking about it a little bit before we, we watched tonight's episode, is that the entire first season was very much a slow burn, <laughs> slow build-up. <laughs> <laughs> and we're on after it. <laughs> it's a slow, it was a slow build up to Abe, you know, being fully committed to the cause. And now that he is, we we hit the gas pedal right out of the gate for for this season. And I think it's just going to keep being that way. I think that's great too. And and I know we've said this before is AMC has such great development with all of its characters. And you know, we write down on a board what stories we're going to hit. And there's so many characters, but I feel like I know all of them. I don't feel like I'm anything's missing. Exactly. And actually, it's funny that you say that, because when we do write down what story points we want to hit, we always do it by character. And this show is so character-driven mm -hmm. that I... I it, like the characters make the show. The spy stuff is really cool and interesting, but if we didn't care about these characters, it wouldn't it wouldn't be nearly as effective. Like a new couple, maybe. <laughs> ah, yeah. Let's go ahead and talk about that because it, it's one thing to hear me kind of gush about it alone. It's so much nicer to have somebody else gush about it with me. Let's talk about Anna and Major Hewlett in this episode. And yeah, since you haven't been here for the last couple weeks, what do you think about this potential love triangle, octagon, hexagon, whatever it is? If I say I ship it, is that a bad pun? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll allow it. Just this once. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I like it. I mean, I always like Hewlett, and he's, you always thought that he, he, you know, even though we consider, like, the English, like, the bad guys, let's say, um... He was never one that went into it with 
with bad intentions. And you could kind of tell that from last season. And then tonight we really figured out that that's he doesn't he wanted to be an astronomer. Yeah, no, it was so interesting to get his backstory um, and to figure out where his passions, you know, really lie. I never would have pegged him as somebody who looked up to the stars, and that's what he that is what he felt like his calling was, mm-hmm. and and that like being a soldier was not his first choice. I mean, we always kind of got the sense that. He was never really a warrior, that he was much more suited to a desk. I never pegged him for a romantic, though. And, and this Apparently season... they're all romantics. <laughs> you know, we have poetry a couple episodes ago from Simcoe, which we I had asked him about last season. Yeah. Like, are we going to see that? And we saw that. And, you know, John Andre's always a man of romance. <laughs> <laughs> John Just the Andre French and, and the, the Swiss ladies. in him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But, um, but yeah, um, in this episode, it starts off with Ben actually handing off the, the ship that they constructed to supposedly be from Abigail's son so that they can pass along uh, the, the method for encoding mm-hmm. that they want Abigail to follow. Anna's not 100% on board with it because she, you know, Abigail never signed up for that. She, she was doing it as a favor to Anna. So, um, but Ben's thought on the on the whole thing is just that let Abigail make her own choices. She's a grown woman. She she make the decision that she wants. And you really do want General Washington to believe anything that she says because yeah. she is a trustworthy source and she's in there and I and I do think it's kind of funny though. And maybe he's suspect because everything is so intricate that just a bold statement <laughs> General Lee is a traitor that he's like, eh, "I don't believe that." Yeah. I mean, <laughs> It's a fortune cookie style message that could literally have come from anywhere. And yeah, we know Abigail's a reliable source. But Washington, and Ben says Abigail's a reliable source, but without their standard, you know, protocol, there's no way of being able to verify that other than word of mouth. And anyone could lie to Ben. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he'd probably believe it if, he, if it came from somebody he thought he could trust. So you, you can't really blame them. But at the same time, it's really frustrating because now it's put these guys in a pickle mm-hmm. in terms of, especially Ben, it's put him in a pickle with Washington. Their bromance is dying a little bit this season. Yeah, that and like their their father son relationship. It kind of kind of went out the window in the last episode. Yeah, it really did, and that was that was so sad <laughs> to watch. It was painful. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah, we can talk about it a little bit since you weren't here. Um, but yeah, no, that scene was brutal to watch because mm-hmm. um, even though Washington says he's not, you know, I'm not your father. I mean, it was basically it was a lot like a father chastising his son and it wasn't the i'm i'm not mad i'm disappointed it was i'm mad and disappointed and yeah that's that's way worse <laughs> yeah it's it it was and what a great i mean again what a great scene to watch though i mean they yeah no um and i actually i actually called it because amc always um on their youtube page does uh the most talked about scene from the previous ep- from you know the episode that aired the night before mm-hmm. from all their different shows and that was one of them that, yeah. uh, so I was like, okay, yeah, I totally called that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but let's get back to um, Anne and Hewlett. I see this ending in tragedy uh, in one way or another because Simcoe is, uh, well, well, and we'll get to Simcoe later, but we know from the last episode that he's on his way to Setauket because that's where he wants his base of operation to be. So we have Simcoe on his way. And Hewlett offering his friendship to Anna. And, and yeah, they have this very sweet, sincere scene where Platonic he's... Platonic relationship. <laughs> oh, poor Hewlett. Um, where he, he invites her. He, he agrees to send off the, the package. And almost you know, as he's twiddling it, it was a very, it was a very good tense scene because he's um, twiddling with the, the toy ship right where the hidden message is. <laughs> and they're setting up a telescope so that the people of Setauket can look at the stars and see the constellations in a new way. And and Hewlett and Anna have this very, very sweet scene where they're looking at the stars together. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I see this ending in tragedy. Probably. Um, and, and, you know, when we do talk more about Simcoe's actions towards the end there... Besides already being kind of pissed off at him <laughs> for every where he ended up, 
now he's like going to steal his woman. Yeah, and we that's a snack. We can right. we can talk about it because it was a very small portion of this week's episode. Mm-hmm. It was um, as we see Simcoe on the warpath, and he takes out a rebel a rebel camp with the Queen's Rangers. And leaves a very gruesome message uh, with uh, in, written in blood, supposedly from Major Hewlett. It's mm-hmm. um, oh gosh, what did it say? It's compliments of Major Hewlett. Death to, to all, all traitors or oh, yeah, all rebels. rebels. Yeah, <laughs> that was it. And then left the poor man's tongue on the note. And yeah, no Simcoe. I because I had almost forgotten that Hewlett was the one that court-martialed him. Mm-hmm. I had forgotten cuz I figured that Simcoe's anger would be, would still be directed 100% towards Ben and Caleb. I didn't even consider Hewlett to be on that hit list, but definitely. And Simcoe is not a forgiving man. And he's going to be like Arya Stark pretty soon and just like writing off like <laughs> names each night so he doesn't, you know, forget who to He'll have a list. Take down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm sure he has a list. He's very studious, and I'm sure it's it's written in very nice penmanship. Yes. Hopefully not blood for all of it. Um. As it could go either way. <laughs> yeah. He's done writing his list, and then he writes some poetry. <laughs> but yeah, I was... Um, I forgot it, and I asked you. I was like, why is he going after Major Hugh? Like, I just don't understand because too they were much. On, they're on the they, same side. Now he's... I mean, nobody, it's it's like, nobody's really in charge of Simcoe, but John Andre's in charge of Simcoe, kind of. Kind of, yeah. And People think they're in charge of Simcoe at this point. Yeah, exactly. And John Andre's not that kind of a guy. I mean, I think once he finds out that that happened, since he was already really ticked off at the dinner table and basically told him, hey, let's not, let's not do this again. I'm going to put you in charge of something else. And then he goes off and <laughs> does something worse than a dinner table. <laughs> well, I, it just goes to show that, yeah, he, I mean, John Andre wanted a barbaric person to be able to get the job done when Robert Rogers, you know, was sent away. I think he picked the wrong man. I mean, in a <laughs> lot of ways, he picked the right man. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, I don't know quite if you had the right idea, but... We'll see. Yeah, um, he always takes it that extra level. Like, I don't know if John Andre would care as much that he killed the guy, but putting that note and cutting off the tongue, that's that extra step yeah. of crazy. Again, it's its barbaric, mm-hmm. uh, but it's its what Simcoe does. I did, um, gosh, but with Simcoe and Hewlett, it, it's funny looking back at season one, because they were, they were in fact on the same team, but they were never on the same page. If you if you kind of look at it with, uh, and I want to go back and rewatch all the episodes because they're on Netflix, and I want to go back and like kind of tally off every time they were at odds or every time Simcoe had to swallow his pride to do what Hewlett said, um, and then every time he defied Hewlett and everything like that. I think Simcoe has his own page. He has his own book. Yeah. Like it's com- <laughs> he doesn't even have a book. Yeah, I figure he's good at keeping track. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's like, oh, so it's all up here. I got it. Yeah. But no, they were never on the same page. And so it makes complete and total sense that when it finally came to a head that, yeah, that this would happen to Simcoe and that Simcoe would take it very personally. Mm -hmm. So that's just going to be trouble. And um, I really like, too, that we saw his group is still listening to him and they they saw the brutality of what he can do. But it is still interesting that they wouldn't think we have a whole group and this is one guy. I guess he's just that scary. And I think Jordan, right, Jordan is, yeah. is, is his um, kind of sidekick now. Um, I think Jordan will end up being a problem for Simcoe down the line because he has yeah. out of, even though he didn't want Simcoe to really be killed that way, if he's going to be around him this much and really see what he's doing, I think we'll have a, you know, he'll have his own rebel in the mix. Yeah, because Robert Rogers... Yeah, he's a gentleman killer, as they put it. But I feel like he wasn't at quite the same level of barbarism as as Simcoe. Sim- especially because Simcoe is so vindictive about everything that he does. Uh, so I was actually surprised, yeah, that Jordan took him up on his offer to be second in command. Because that's, that's what it looks like here. And, and that surprised me last week because... Nobody in Satakit really liked Simcoe, except maybe a few of his subordinate officers. Nobody really did. And so it, it surprised me that Jordan 
would take him up on that offer and that Simcoe even offered it in the first place. I guess he was just like, oh, familiar face. Cool. I might be able to trust you. Yeah. I think it was more of a trying to keep himself safe. If 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 the most brutal man in your camp says, I want you to be my number two, <laughs> I'd be kind of scared to say no. <laughs> That's true. That's the last time I'd say anything. My tongue would be cut out and on the letter. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, you can't you can't exactly tell a guy like that no, huh? I when, think he's when even he offers crazier. you a job. <laughs> he's even crazier now without his white wig. <laughs> he's well, like, I am all myself. I'm taking it off. <laughs> he's letting it go. Exactly. Uh, I can't believe I did that. Anyway... Let's let's go ahead and move on um, because we were talking about Ben a little bit earlier. Um, ben and Benedict Arnold. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> ben and Ben. They could have their own show. Um, but Ben at the very beginning of this episode, as we mentioned, is really worried about where he stands with Washington. And and in a lot of ways, he's pro- he probably feels to an extent like he also betrayed Benedict Arnold's trust for kind of using him to plant that letter. Although nobody knows about that yet. So I'm wondering, um, because here we have Benedict Arnold offering him a job to be his, um, to be his aide, essentially, in the camp. Mm -hmm. And Ben is honored because this, this guy has a reputation and he's very much respected. But at the same time, he's also scary. He's Mm -hmm. terrifying and is also a very proud, arrogant man. Even though he, he is an honorable man, he's also arrogant. So it's, and again, his loyalty is to Washington. So it's, it'll be interesting, it's interesting to see him kind of go back and forth with himself as to whether or not he wants to help Benedict Arnold. Do you think he'll take the position? He, he asked for it at the end of the episode. He asked to fill it in, but you can't be a spy and a soldier. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if he'll be completely dedicated to that because he has too many friends involved in being the spy. And as we saw, he even went personally to go see Abe and saw Anna. And, you know, the way he surprised her and gave her a hug and everything, I just think there's going to be a conflict of interest there. And I kind of wonder if that may not be part of the reason, it, you know, spoiler alert, Benedict <laughs> Arnold becomes a traitor. Um, if that's not part of it besides all the other stuff that John Andre has in the works. But if... If it'll be something, you know, he talked about all these all, be, these people you can't trust in this camp. And then Judas's he, and Machiavell's. I thought that was such a great <laughs> use of the word Machiavellian. And um, I think with Ben, he's going to end up being a Judas to Benedict, which yeah. will make Benedict give up. I give yeah, up. I'm, yeah, I'm out. The, the whole point with Benedict Arnold switching sides, the whole big thing about that is how tragic it is because for so long he was an American hero. Mm-hmm. He was a war hero. He was ferocious in battle and and the fact that he became a traitor is tragic. It, it, and it was the result of a number of a number of things. And I think you're absolutely right. I think this is going to be one of them. So, yeah, I think Ben is going to pretend to be 100% loyal to Arnold when, in fact, he's still going to be trying to placate Washington and and kind of get back into his good graces. Yeah, he may have taken it just because he had daddy issues. (laughs) Possibly. Uh, And I think he respects Benedict Arnold in his own way. Uh, But you're absolutely right. It's way too personal for Ben for him to throw the spy stuff to the side. Mm -hmm. It's it's too personal. He's got too much personally invested in it. That was part of the reason Anna stayed in, we saw in the last couple episodes. They're all too close. The four of them, if we add Caleb in there, they're all going to have each other's backs before anything else. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, you're right. She says, I, I made a promise to our friends, and that's what matters to her. Not mm-hmm. just Abe, all of them. Yeah. Which, how, I know we don't get to see it very often, but I love seeing the three of them interact. Mm-hmm. I, I absolutely adore seeing, uh, and we only got to see it for a little bit last season, but all four of them together. It's a joy <laughs> to watch them all play off each other. Um, because you can tell just based on their chemistry, not only do the actors have good chemistry together, but these characters have such history together. Well, and I I hope at least, I think they all get along off you know, um, yeah, again, behind they the have, scenes as well. They have good chemistry. And they started together at the beginning, so probably these scenes, they're so few and far between because now 
you know, Jamie Bell's character is in New York and they're filming in Setauket and then Ben's in, you know, everywhere. <laughs> so it's just, he gets, they're all in different places throughout it. So even during filming, they don't get to see each other a lot anymore. So when they come together, it's like, hey! It's a reunion <laughs> probably for them on screen and off screen. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's yeah. Again, it's just very touching to see. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you you mentioned Caleb. Let's talk about Caleb because this was probably the most action packed portion of this week's episode because we don't get a whole lot of battles in turn. It's it's very dedicated to the spy stuff. Um, but oh, and actually, we should probably mention the uh, agent reagent that Ben introduced at the beginning of the episode, disappearing ink. So mm -hmm. that's going to be cool. Um, and I love it's Anna's reaction cool. to it. Magic. No, chemistry. Science. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag science. But yeah, um, going back to Caleb, uh, he and Robert Rogers both are trying to intercept uh, Ryder, the captain of the pirate ship Revenge. We were making Princess Bride jokes last, <laughs> <laughs> last episode. Um, but yeah, so they, they more or less show up at the same time, and this battle ensues. And we were talking about it during the episode. I was not expecting Rogers to come in guns blazing. Because he mentioned, yeah. he acted like he knew the guy. Maybe maybe guns blazing was the answer because he knew how Ryder operated, maybe? I was waiting for it. I was sitting there going, okay, he's going to show up. <laughs> They're both going to end up there at the same time. I'm glad Caleb got there early. <laughs> and at least got to kind of find out the place. But... I just, I don't know, I got a bad, I got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> well, so did Caleb. He kept looking around. He knew something was going to happen eventually. Because yeah. he knew Rogers. Rogers was the one who basically exposited that information to him while he was hiding in the shadows. So he knew that if he didn't hurry, Rogers was going to show up at any second. Mm -hmm. I just wasn't expecting guns to go off. That's all. I think, you know, Rogers, it's kind of all or nothing with him. So he... He, he went. He went balled out on this particular <laughs> section, and and I I really like. I don't know why I feel like Caleb and Roger should have scenes together. I don't know how that would work because they would try to kill each other like they did. But I liked when Rogers yells, "You know, drop that!" And he's like, "Oh, good idea!" <laughs> and he drops it to grab the note and then run off, so he doesn't have to run around there, with a big bust. There are bearded so rogues speak. on on opposite sides, so of course we want to see them interact. <laughs> It's the beards. We talked about that last season. <laughs> Men with beards. It's they're, great. They're so much fun to watch. But um, <laughs> but yeah, with with this particular scene, I guess the the idea for Rogers was that you don't try to steal from a pirate. The the only real way to to steal from a privateer, which is a legalized pirate, is to is to steal going in guns blazing. Don't leave anybody behind. Yeah, because they all have a code to an extent, but. They're going to well, fight dirty. And the other thing was, is actually, it could have been a security measure as well, because Ryder knew about the note inside of the uh, inside of the sculpture. To know that, that is dangerous. And that was actually part of the point, I think, was to get rid of everybody who had, who might have even had knowledge about the note. Mm -hmm. So that could have been another reason why he just went in full force. Clean house. Yeah, exactly. But Caleb gets away with the note. And actually something, I, I wanted to bounce something off of you because I had nobody to talk to you for the last oh. couple of weeks. I don't know what this note is. I've been calling it the MacGuffin because it's the thing that we're after at this moment. But from the beginning of the episode, from the season premiere, we just know that it's a note of, or a letter of some sort from the king. We don't know what information is encoded on there. No, because it was whatever she ripped out of that book. Exactly. We don't know what it is, though. Yeah. But whatever information it was, it was important enough to kill anybody who might have gotten their hands on it. I tend to think, because he was ripping it up when, when those guys came in to tell him kind of the status of, you know, their 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 front almost, I, I think it was. And so it has to almost say something, you know, what... What to expect almost, how many men in each port. I tend to think it's more a numbers like thing. Valuable information, like secret yeah. locations of troops or something like, like I that. I don't think it's something <laughs> like, oh, he's he's got a the king's gonna die in a year. I don't think it's <laughs> I don't think it's like a doctor's note or something where you know, <laughs> like it turns out the like, king is ill or yeah, something like so that. It doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> uh, I don't think it's something like that. I think it's gonna be more 
kind of how their numbers are dwindling maybe or even Washington's waiting for the French maybe it's something with that even possibly maybe they reached out to the French and said like hey don't help these Americans and they're (laughs) like screw you we're already halfway across the Atlantic to help these guys out so I tend to think it's something more like that. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Because I, I just kept thinking, what could possibly be so important that you have to kill anybody who might have even gotten their hands on it? So, that that's just me. That's just me wondering. Anyway. So we talked about uh, Ben and Rogers. Um, can we get to John Andre now? <laughs> <laughs> I know I said I'm gonna go extra um, girly, but. Is it just me or his, did his like little ponytail braid thing like get bigger? <laughs> Is it longer now? I think now? it's longer <laughs> over this last season. I mean, and obviously it's working for him. Yeah, no, the ladies love the ponytail, they <laughs> the, even, the little braid. They even talked about it in one of the previous <laughs> they, episodes, kind of like did. this man is distinguished with his <laughs> braid ponytail. <laughs> I mean, I can't, I can't blame him. But um, but this is a confirmation, uh, basically, this episode um, because. Of, of the fact that they were building this up as a love triangle. Because prior to this episode, you could see his and Peggy's back and forth as possibly just being a thing of mutual respect because neither neither of them like to be played or manipulated, but they like manipulating other people. Mm-hmm. So you get two masters of the game going head to head and kind of trying to one-up the other, but at the same time wanting to respect the other's space. So it could have been romantic or it could have been a mutual respect in a way that men and women didn't have mutual respect for each other back then. Mm -hmm. So it could have been either one, but we for sure get a romance this time. Yeah. I'm not... I'm I'm team Philomena. (laughs) (laughs) I miss Amy Gumnett. I, I agree with you. I, I loved, she was so entertaining in the previous season. I, I want her to come back. And and Peggy's cute. I don't mind her. And, and I think the actress is doing a great job. But she because she's a distinguished lady of the court, she can't do all those hilarious <laughs> scenes that Philomena was, you know, to that group. And we don't get any explanation to where she went. Yeah, no, uh, it's just kind of went away and hasn't been mentioned since but you're absolutely right Philomena could do she could do anything because she was an actress Mm -hmm. so she could be anyone and infiltrate anywhere and and be so entertaining at the same time you know she's pretending to be tortured but she's you know piling up her winnings (laughs) in a card game uh, at the same time so she was fantastic to watch and it is a shame that she's she's not here this entire season, correct? I yeah, I don't believe so. No, oh, I will. Cause such a bummer. congratulations to Amy. She was on Arrow and yeah, all this no. kind of fun stuff. So which is great. Just but probably just scheduling conflicts. When you find time in your schedule, come back to this show because we miss you. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I like Peggy a lot. I I do. I I miss Philomena, but I do like Peggy, and I think what they're doing to set this up makes for a very interesting dynamic between her and Benedict Arnold and John Andre Mm -hmm. because yeah no this is they this is very clearly going to be John Andre needs her to do x y and z to win over Benedict Arnold and she'll have to do that but now John Andre is in love with her and that's going to be a whole thing <laughs> he'll find somebody else some all of a sudden there'll be somebody named the manguin on the show and it'll just it'll go crazy from there oh lord <laughs> i'm never gonna kidding. hear the end of it am i <laughs> i told you i can't compete i can't compete you're getting red <laughs> shut up anyway but um but what i did like in this episode was when he and peggy first go to meet each other he's been invited over and her father has a reverend and a lawyer (laughs) lined up he's got like this entire posse to be like okay so you're clearly you clearly want to marry my daughter okay let's get some things figured out and john andre is genuinely surprised he's like beg pardon and i was like oh yeah no uh, okay you protested no big deal okay so moving on no i legitimately didn't propose yeah that, I think, was it was really funny because it takes a lot to catch John Andre unawares. And this season is the only time we've seen him unable to deal with somebody and 
genuinely caught off guard and surprised. I think he was more surprised here than when Simcoe stabbed a guy at his dinner table. Yeah. <laughs> that was just so hilariously awkward, that <laughs> whole scene. And I feel like... You know, even in this day and age, I feel like some parents would almost, like, do that. <laughs> like, you know what? You and my child would be amazing together. <laughs> Let's discuss this. <laughs> you know, because, I mean, you sh I'm sure you had, like, oh, I got the perfect son for you. You know, <laughs> stuff like that at some point. And you're, like, I remember I got stuck at a party once where somebody was, like, you guys would be adorable. And I'm, like, I don't know who you are. Um, so it was kind of, like, that feeling. And I feel like we've all been through it. So to even watch that, hey, even John Andre, you know, back then that kind of stuff was happening <laughs> he was like yeah beg, beg your pardon how, how i need some stronger tea i See, think my dad was the exact opposite my dad was the guy who was like we've got a gun and five acres of land and we're not <laughs> afraid to use them <laughs> so i mean, not quite but <laughs> that is adorable <laughs> Um, but yeah i i don't know what do you think of this being set up as a romance uh in because that that will eventually be a love triangle because in this episode arnold gets the letter that she sent and you can clearly see the seeds of john andre's plan starting to grow i think they need to be a little careful about how many triangles they're building <laughs> there are so many <laughs> or squares at this point i'm not you know how many people love anna i can't keep up i think everybody Sela, abe hewlett simcoe four yeah, that so we it's know a square. Of. That we know. Of. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's just. And I think it needs to just be a little bit careful and just make sure it doesn't go completely off track to make sure that it's. Well, not to go back to I mean, a previous plot thread that we already covered. I'm a little worried they're going to kill Hewlett. In in all honesty, you know, not to jump to predictions, but with Simcoe coming back. Hewlett may very well be a dead man by the end of the next episode. Well, and... and it, so that, that turns it back into uh, three people who love Hannah. And it does seem to... It, it is more brutal this season. In a, in, in a good way. Well, let's <laughs> I know, kill it more sounds, people. It sounds so weird to hear that, but this season has been so good and intriguing so far. And part of the reason for that is because the first season was so quiet and the season starts off with multiple murders. That is insane. And I think some shows just do it to do it, but when you have a show that is about war, it makes more sense to well, add that into it. And for a series about war, there has been very, very few fatalities in our series, very mm -hmm. few character deaths. So when we see two people at the very beginning of this series, or at this season, be killed after being introduced because it's one thing to hear about how poor you know Samuel Talmadge passed away. Uh, it's a completely different see thing to see the spy introduced and then killed within two minutes of her introduction. You know that mm -hmm. sort of thing, yeah. along with an innocent bystander. You yeah. know, so it just it raises the stakes and it makes you feel that much more tension when when we see characters who clearly hate each other about to crash into each other. Absolutely. No, I agree. So, so, yeah. No, that's... I hope they don't kill Hewlett. I I adore watching him try to woo Anna because he's so sincere, and that's that's the heartbreaking part. I wonder if they'll do, like, an AMC Walking Dead where all of a sudden, once you really like a character, you know, then <sighs> that's when they kill him. They're like, we're going to really make you love them, and then... That would be so bam. AMC of them, wouldn't it? <laughs> <sighs> You've hurt me too Thanks, many times, AMC. show. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, okay, so we, we've talked about that. We've talked about Simcoe and Ben. Let's go ahead and talk about Abe's section of the story this time around. Because this this was actually... Uh, we were talking about the acting in this season. And Jamie Bell's acting is 100% on point mm -hmm. this season. And it is fantastic to watch him work. And, and something I adore, and I notice it in Abe's scenes more than anybody else, I, I love the lighting in this show. And every time there's a scene with Abe, they are very careful and deliberate about their light and shadow that they sure. show. And I love that because he is our main spy, and you do have to kind of be in the light and be in the shadows at the same time. So I love the way they do that with Abe. But um, for this for this episode he has two things to contend with and first is winning over Townsend 
who, historically speaking, we know eventually joins the Culpa Ring, and also dealing with his father, who has learned of his secret in being a spy. Mm -hmm. And those, uh, man, neither of those things went very well this time around. No. Although he he probably had more luck with Townsend, because um, he goes, because he wants to convince Townsend to be a part of the ring that they have going because he didn't turn him in over to the British. So even though he's not participating in the rebellion, he had the opportunity to sell Abe out and didn't. Mm-hmm. Now, they mentioned Townsend's father and... Yeah, Samuel. S- exactly. So on the one hand, he's clearly sympathetic to the Patriot cause but is afraid to stand to step out, or maybe fear isn't the right word, but something is holding him back from actually being a part of the rebellion. What do you think that could be? Just being comfortable, maybe? No, I think there's a past there, and I think it'll be something that we will know about okay, because he will join this group eventually, and they're, it's kind of like with Hewlett. I mean, we're, we, know, we knew earlier that he wasn't, his heart wasn't in this, mm-hmm. and now we know why. And I think they're just kind of wetting our appetite until eventually we get to that point where they're going to say what it is. Now, what it is, it's got to be a family thing. I think it's kind of, yeah. you know, I don't think it's just the Samuel stuff. I think there's probably something else there. You know, why is he in this place by himself? He's of age to have a wife at that time, to maybe have kids, and you don't see him with anybody. No. So I think it's... And that's not to say that Deeper he doesn't that. have a wife. No, I mean, there's yeah. several people that way. But I just feel like for that time, that was kind of a bigger deal. And if it's a family that people know, usually that is, you know, they have John Andre over for tea and here, yeah. marry, my, <laughs> marry my daughter and all that kind of stuff. So, Yeah, no, that it is interesting. But in a weird way, it seems like he wants to be convinced. Mm-hmm. Like he's just on the edge of being a part of the rebellion, but something is holding him back, but he wants to be pushed in the right direction. Uh, and something interesting, they sit down for a game of checkers, and they're, I loved this scene. They're, the dialogue is they're going back and forth, talking about kings and pawns and spies. and It wasn't very secretive. <laughs> no, not really. But, uh, but it, it was interesting to me that they used checkers because normally in scenes like this, you use chess pieces. And maybe the reason why they went with checkers is maybe because it doesn't start off with there being any kings. You have to get your piece across the board for there to be a king. So maybe maybe it was conducive to that dialogue. It's too British. <laughs> maybe. They just cut it out. Where, where did checkers come from? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, they call it um, draughts, I think. Yeah, yeah they call it draughts. <laughs> so somebody uh, on YouTube, uh, go look up the history of checkers. And Obviously, we didn't look it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't have time. But I, I did think that was a very interesting choice because it, it is, yeah, I guess maybe chess is considered more of an intellectual game, even though both games are very strategic based. Or it's just cheaper. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that <laughs> the British... Bleh, uh, British, <laughs> I cannot not talk today. Soldiers like aren't paying that much to to um, stay over at his little hotel that he's got going on. So he's like, yeah. man, I can't afford a chess set. <laughs> maybe, or maybe it's the idea that all the pieces are equal up until you have a king, because mm-hmm. any piece can take out any other piece. Eh, chess is that way too, but you have to be in certain proximity. You can't have one checker piece going across the board. And it'd be a longer conversation for somebody to win. That's true. And you could do multiple moves at once. Exactly. It's cool. <laughs> you can so jump play all checkers across. over chess, people. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've played checkers. Um, but the other, the other part of Abe's storyline is he sees a man following him. Mm-hmm. Immediately assumes that it's, of course, some British spy who's caught on to him. He tracks him down, although they both get assaulted by this guy named Joe. Uh, what was his Jehovah's yeah. tongue? <laughs> Doctor Jehovah's. I tongue. don't think it was Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat. That was it. <laughs> Doctor Jehoshaphat tongue. Who? Who the heck is that guy? He, I guess he's just a street gang leader. Um, they made such a point though out of saying his name that I feel like we'll see him again. Possibly. I don't know if historically he was a gang person in, you know, in New York during this time, or if they just liked the name Jehoshaphat. <laughs> I don't 
don't know. It's a pretty fun name. I was trying to look on my phone before we got in here while we were watching, and pretty much just like tongue doctors came up <laughs> the whole time. So I, I have no Nothing answer. Nothing useful. Maybe, maybe I need he's, a better Maybe he's computer. the one that coins the phrase jump in Jehoshaphat. Maybe. <laughs> because he jumped out. <laughs> That could be it. But they they stab this poor guy whose name was um, Henry Browning, who was not, in fact, a British spy. He was just sent by Abe's father to kind of keep an eye on him. And that poor guy died in the street, and Abe had to leave him to die. Uh, So he wasn't found out. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, this was a brutal scene. It's, It's just another example of... They're not afraid to kill people anymore in the show. Mm-hmm. They, yeah, they're not shying away from that. But when, then when Abe gets back, we have this confrontation between him and his father, and then this scene together with the three of them, uh, Hewlett included. What did you think of this scene? I really liked it, and I thought it was really interesting how Hewlett goes, there are too many secrets in this <laughs> house, I can't deal with it, let's just put this one at least out in the open, and we'll all sit together, and... I think being around Anna has softened him even more. And so I really liked it, though. And I don't know why, but it was it was not funny. But it, it, not funny, haha, anyways. But it was funny to see Abe go in there. He just, like, pushed his dad up against the wall and be like, yeah. I have had enough No, his dad's you. still recovering from a gunshot wound. Yeah, I mean. That seemed excessive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But, I mean, at the same time, going after this guy he thought was spying on him nearly cost him his life, and it did. Henry is dead now. If his Mm -hmm. father hadn't pushed him to do that, he wouldn't be dead. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, no, a man's life is gone because of Richard choosing, you know, to have him tail Abe. And that's something Abe is going to have to live with. And he already has Ensign Baker's death on his conscience. Mm-hmm. He probably doesn't want anybody else's. But um, even though being a spy, you're going to get people killed. That's just the way of things. But um, I thought was really interesting is right after Hewlett says, too many secrets, no more secrets, Abe basically conceals the fact that Richard had him tailed. And, and basically, you know, said that Henry Browning was the one that, you know, was actually acting as a spy for the Sons of Liberty, and that you find him, you find the Sons of Liberty, Henry Browning's dead now. So, again, it's just another dead end for Hewlett because Abe is fabricating all this information, but Richard knows that's a lie. Mm-hmm. So, for in Richard's eyes, why would Abe lie unless he has something else to hide? So it's basically Abe, without admitting it openly, openly admitting, yes, I'm there to spy. Yeah. So that it's such a weird way to go about it, though. I, I was a little confused at, I obviously he seems to generally know what he's doing, but I think it was an interesting move. I don't know why he would show his hand to his father when obviously his father's still on the other side. He's trying to get him followed. I don't know if it's just kind of a, hey, F you kind of <laughs> to him. I don't know if that's what that was about. I think maybe it has something to do with what Townsend said to him earlier, because he said, you are not a spy. You are a boy playing a man playing a spy. And you're you're doing it basically to defy your father. To, and to, he kind of proved it right there. Yeah. So I, I think those words really stung and really sunk in. And then when his father was essentially babysitting him or attempting to control his life again, he he took it really personally and took it as a front in a number of ways and yeah did throw it in his father's face but now not only does his wife know that he's spying but now his father knows his father who is very loyal to the british crown so this can only end badly for him you're either going to get your dad in trouble well no yeah you're going to get your dad in trouble basically one way or another he's either going to sell you out or he's going to have to be complicit in Abe's dealings, which will probably eventually unravel anyway. Yeah, absolutely. I I think eventually it'll be a huge problem for Abe's dad because I think when it comes down to it, really down to it, not just little stuff, you know, Richard's going to pick Abe. Yeah. And when that happens and somebody finds out on the other side, it's not going to be good. No, no. There, it Basically, this is 
all set up to to come unraveling at some point. Again, we got a lot of things building, and I'm just waiting for things to come crashing down, yeah. at least around Abe. Huh, so yeah, that that basically does it for for this week's episode. Uh, let's go and talk some predictions. <laughs> and now you're after Buzz TV predictions. <laughs> well, we we talked about it a little bit earlier. I think it's possible that Simcoe's gonna kill Major Hewlett at the at during next week's episode. I don't want that in any way, shape, or form. But if he doesn't kill him, he's going to attempt to kill him. Mm -hmm. Do you think right away, or do you think that'll be a little, a little well, more in Well, it season? looks like they, they meet in the middle of the day, um, but then uh, at the end of the promo that they had for next week's episode, they had Anna screaming Hewlett's name at night. So it makes me wonder if uh, Simcoe doesn't come up to Hewlett in the middle of the day to be lording his, you know, flaunting his new authority, because technically that's what uh, Robert Rogers did when he came into town, too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he he had orders straight from John Andre, so that's what Simcoe has right now, so he can flaunt that same authority, and then I think under the cover of night that's when he's going to attack. I think it's almost too soon for something like that. I think... And I think they want to probably maybe explore Anna using him a little bit more or, you know. Well, like I said, maybe attempted killing then. Yeah. I wouldn't put it past him to maybe give some warning signs. You know, one of those like, oops, I just missed. You know, I can feel him doing that. <laughs> oops, and it's tricky, tricky to hold these, these yeah. things. <laughs> you never know what might happen. <laughs> oh, my trigger finger slipped. Whoops. Yeah, I, we talked about some of the other stuff that, that we kind of predicted while we were, you know, we're yeah. talking earlier. But I do think Ben with with Benedict is going to be a big hit for him. And yeah. I'll be interested to see. I think John Andre is going to do something almost besides just having Peggy go to Benedict. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to maybe mess something up with Peggy to even get her to go towards him. Yeah. Do you think that he'll break off their relationship so that she'll genuinely go for Benedict Arnold? Or do you think he'll just kind of ask her to put up a front and that they'll have a secret love affair on the side? I think they'll have a secret love affair for a little bit. But I think eventually she'll probably choose, you know, Benedict well, for some reason. And the other thing is that John Andre is an honorable man. Yeah, he has fun and entertains the ladies, but I don't know if he's ever committed adultery, and that might be a little bit too much of a line for him to cross. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know exactly what his code of honor would dictate when it comes to love. So, you know, because he, like most of the men in the show, are men of honor. So, you know, they abide by their own codes. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if he would try to break it off before they get married or not. Yeah. Or if he'd be like, eh, whatever, I set you up. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, Hewlett's telescope is going to come in handy, too. Yeah, no, they, they mentioned it, it might make for a, a really perfect spyglass. Exactly. So, yeah. All right, well, that basically wraps it up for this week's episode. Kristen, where can the people go if they want to find out more about you? Hey, guys, you can find me on Twitter at KristenCarroll13. And then I'm just here for a turn for now, so... Well, hopefully we'll have you back on more shows soon. <laughs> Maybe and some red carpets. Yay! Let's hope. And I'm your host, Megan. You can follow me on Twitter at The Menguin. That's T-H-E-M-E-N-G-U-I-N. -E I also do a bunch of shows here at After Buzz, and I've started writing articles for The Movie Chick. That's Chick with two Ks, so be sure to check those out. Folks, thank you again so much for tuning in. We will see you all next week. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire After Buzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the After Buzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, see you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.